All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, Bill. Um, I think uh, with everything going on and, and how crazy uh, things are these days, I think you know probably the number one thing on everyone's mind at, at this very second is how old is this kid? Now, it's a fair question. I'm 15, uh, but school's canceled, uh, so I really have nothing better to do. You know, no permission slip needed. I had nothing else going on. Um, well, I'm not 15. I, I know I do have that youthful look, and I think the second question you're asking is why on earth am I making a pathetic attempt at growing out a mustache? But uh, as Bill said, it's extraordinary times, and uh, I felt like if I want to be taken seriously when the looting started, I, I needed to have some facial hair. So um, that explains both of those. Um, it, that's about as much fun as we're going to have here this afternoon, admittedly. Uh, it, it's a different vibe, but again, uh, extraordinary times, but extraordinary measures. Again, we are thrilled that we were able to come together with this solution for all of you, to, for me to get in front of you uh, at such an uncertain time. Again, my job as your teleconomist here for this afternoon is to inject some certainty into your worldview. We know that uncertainty and fear, uh, particularly as we look the last several weeks, is your enemy. It's the enemy of confident and profitable decision making. So I'm here to inject some certainty into your worldview. Uh, a, a black swan event in our world at ITR, again, it's something inherently unpredictable. It, it falls outside the uh, purview of leading indicators, our leading indicator methodology, which I'm going to talk about today and, and uh, a program called Datacast, ways that you can track these leading indicators, because um, they have never been more crucial. Uh, the economics of fear ruled the day in March and, and late February and early April, but now we are seeing uh, general, the economic fundamentals of supply and demand are starting to reassert themselves here as we break into the second half of April and as we look forward to a reopening economy later on here in the second quarter. But in the intermediate to long term, as we look to 2021, growth is coming back. Your businesses will be coming back online. I don't want you overreacting in the next two, three, four months where you handcuff yourself and, and you retrench to the point that you are playing from behind when things start to pick back up again. It's going to be about walking that tightrope again, making cuts where you need to make cuts. That will happen for a lot of you. Again, moving perhaps some C players uh, out of the organization that you haven't had a choice to but to have in your company during the tight labor markets of the last five, six, seven years. Uh, but I want you in a position to move forward when the economic cycle starts to move forward and improve when we break into the second half of this year. I'm going to take a step back and look at a leading indicator systematic approach. Again, this is so crucial for your businesses uh, in this cycle. And again, this is new for all of you. Again, most of you have not seen ITR before. This is a new methodology for you and one that I want you implementing in the next few months. So rates of change, how do we derive those rates of change? Again, that, that growth rate that I talked about for US GDP. Again, how do we get there? So this is something, as I said, you can leverage this in your business. I want you leveraging this in your business. I'm gonna to call to you to do that at the end of this presentation. Now the fundamentals are coming back in play. I want you to get a firm analytical and, and empirical grasp of your business and the economy so that you can start managing the business cycle. I want you to look at the center of the screen, the bottom of this cycle about, I want you leveraging the business cycle. I want you knowing when the bottom's coming, that's when it's time to put your chips on the table in whatever manner that means. Again, whatever fits for your business as far as increasing your risk exposure. Again, whether we're tapping into our lines of credit, whether we are, again, tapping the, the bank's money or our own dry powder to decrease our liquidity and go all in to prepare for that next rising cycle. The unfortunate reality is most businesses excel at the exact opposite of this chart. They're increasing their risk exposure. They are loading up at the top of the business cycle right before things fall off, and then they are staying stuck and cocooned in their shells at the bottom of the business cycle, costing themselves on the backside when things start to ramp back up again into the next rising cycle. I don't want you reacting to the business cycle. I want you being proactive. I want you managing the business cycle, but you can't do that without data. 